The Wangi. The Wangi. For the Wangi. Never been here before, so who knows what it's going to be like. I was originally planning to go south for today's adventure. I was going to be meeting up with my son because uh, he's got some ramps for me that I bought off eBay, which the guy kindly dropped off at my son's house. But he's not feeling very well today. So change of plans and I'm actually going to head north and I'm going to go to Loch Lomond. And we're going to go up the east side of Loch Lomond. Instead of going straight on to head south, we're going to take a left turn and go across the Erskine Bridge onto the north side of the Clyde. Coming up to the roundabout now, we're going to go right towards Bala, which is where we're going to start our adventure today. If you carry on straight on, that takes you up the west side of Loch Lomond towards Duck Bay and Tarbert and Ard Louis. Or if you're going towards Arica and across the rest and be thankful. Go up on the left so you can stock up with all of your groceries. I was planning to go into the car park there, but it appears to be closed. So that's scuppered, but normally you can park a van in the car park on the right hand side there which gives you access into the town. It's a fantastic chip shop just on our left. We've had fish and chips there plenty of times. And the Ballock House Hotel on the right hand side does a lovely meal too. So after being thwarted at my first stop, I carried on towards the village of Gartha Khan for my next planned location. Don't know if you'll see it as we come around the corner. That's Duncrine Hill in the distance, it just sticks up higher than the ground around it for miles has a great view over Loch Lomond so hopefully we're going to go and climb that hill we're on the A811 going through the village of Gartha Khan apart from a petrol station and a pub the village doesn't seem to have much to offer the visitor. Well, would you believe it? That road's closed as well. Seems to be a bit of a theme going on today. So what I'm going to do then, change of plan, as we couldn't climb Duncrine Hill, instead of going left up the east side of Loch Lomond, I'm going to make a detour to the right and go to a place called the Wangi. I've never been there before. I've driven past plenty of times but it sounds like quite an interesting walk so let's go and give it a go you might have heard of a place called the devil's pulpit especially if you're a fan of the tv program outlander it's one of the locations that was used for filming there's an area where people park just at this junction on the left and then just as we go a little bit further on there's a small lay-by on the right hand side but they get very crowded very quickly it's a deep sandstone gorge with a river running at the bottom. Because of the colour of the sandstone riverbed, the water appears to be flowing vivid red, and the red rock walls are covered in green moss, which gives a really vivid contrast. This is our parking area just coming up, a couple of hundred yards on the right. We'll pull in here. Loads of space today. It gets a bit more busy in the summer and at the weekends. Took myself away in the corner over here. Uh, it looks relatively flat. We've arrived at the car park for the Wangi. Park the van. So now me and Amber are going to be going for a walk. Never been here before, so who knows what it's going to be like. Something I'm going to do just before we set off is to get the doggy bag ready. If you've not heard of doggy bags, they're a fantastic invention. It's like a microfiber zip-up bag 
that uh, you can put a wet dog into and zip up and then give them a good rub down and they're dry in no time. I find it's fantastic for keeping the seats of the van clean and Amber really likes it as well. She uh, sits nice and calm when she's in it until she's dry. So that's Amber's doggy bag sitting ready for us to be zipped into when we come back from the walk. It's not too wet today so hopefully she won't get into too much mess. <laughs> Come on. Good girl. Come on then. You can do it. Come on. Come on, Amber. Good girl, come on then. Come on. Come on. Come on then. Come on, good girl. There you go. That's it, let's go. This is the path we've come up from the van, parked just down there. And if I pan around to the left, you can see the first view of Loch Lomond away in the distance there. So if you can see it there, that dark hill on this side of Loch Lomond that's sticking up just between the two left-hand islands is Duncrine Hill. That was the one that I'd originally planned to climb up today, but with the road being closed, I don't know if there's any other way of getting around there, but I don't know how to get access to it. This rock formation just here is the Wangi. Let's follow the path and have a look. impressive. I just tried to fly the drone. It's quite sheltered within the rocks here but when I tried to take it out through that gap it was really struggling against the wind. I wanted to try and get a view across towards Loch Lomond but uh, I had to call it a day. I don't want to crash it or lose it. Come on Amber, get the ball. It's started to rain now, so I'm going to try and make it back down to the van as quickly as possible so as not to get too wet. And we're still quite happy to run around. Just met a few other dogs on the way today. I'm glad I remembered to put my walking boots on today. It's pretty muddy in places. There's also bits where the path is just like the bed of a stream with the water running down off the hill. I thought it had stopped raining, but when I stopped and had a quick look around, I realized that it's just that I'm moving with the wind. And so it's not really falling on my face at all, but it's still 
rain in a little bit. <laughs> I don't know if you saw the state that Amber was in when we were out for a walk but this is a in the doggy bag now getting nice and dry she's probably been in it for about 10 minutes so just give her a bit of a, a rub down you love it don't you yeah you love it and then we can see whether she's clean and dry do you think you're ever going to come back white again right let's have a look let's I can leave that fastened. See how you look. Oh, you're still a bit mucky. Oh, are you dry? Yeah, you're dry. But she's still a bit dirty. Which is basically dry. <laughs> there. You're a good girl. Nice. One doggy bag. I'll we'll just hang that up now and let it dry out. We're now going back to where we came. We're going to head towards Drimmen and Balmaha. In case you missed it the first time, we're just passing the Devil's Pulpit again. This junction here is the road we turned out of earlier on when I changed the plan after the road to Duncroyne Hill was closed. So now we're back on the original plan to go towards Drimmen and turn off for Balmaha. I don't know if it's coming through on the audio but this road surface is pretty poor. The van's rattling about all over the place. Don't know if the angle of the camera's picking it up but that's Loch Lomond. We're getting close to Balmaha. So here we are in Balmaha. There's a little pub there and a shop as well I think car park on the right hand side I'm not going to go in there today my plan is that uh, we'll go in there tomorrow and possibly climb up conic hill if the weather's reasonable every time i come along this stretch of road i think back to a night about probably three or four years ago now when i saw on facebook that people were posting that the northern lights were visible really strongly in the Loch Lomond area and I showed Eileen and the kids were already in their pajamas ready for bed but we all piled into the car and set off along this way and we got the most fantastic display of northern lights um, even when we went to Iceland a few months later the, uh, the display that we saw wasn't quite as impressive as what we saw here this is our first stop off just here coming up on the left Milwaukee Bay famous among photographers for the tree I'll put up some of my pictures for you to see that I've taken of that tree over the years
parked up at Milarku Bay. Fabulous view across Loch Lomond. Just at the edge of the water there, you can probably see the tree that I mentioned earlier. It's raining quite steadily now. So I think for now, I'm quite happy to just stay comfy, warm and dry inside the van. Another shot from the car park, looking across the lock. Got the van parked just there. And apart from that red car, I've got the place to myself at the moment. It's not like this in the summer. Like I said, it's a really popular spot with photographers, especially around sunset. You get a gathering sometimes of 20 or 30 photographers turn up for sunset. I think one of the things about Scotland is that you really need to be able to appreciate the outdoors, whatever the weather. It's grey and it's raining now. Looking across the loch at the way the hills and mountains across the other side are all fading away into the mist. It's still beautiful. I had intended to record myself taking this picture and talk through it at the time but as you can see I've pretty much failed I've got my back to the camera and the microphone can't hear a word that I'm saying so I'll talk you through it now from home my intention was to shoot a panoramic image um, because I wanted to get the rocks in the foreground and the mountains in the background but if I'd used a wide angle lens the mountains would have disappeared into nothingness so using the 70-200 um, lens at about 90 millimeters, it meant that I could get the rocks in the foreground and the mountains in the background and that they'd still have some presence in the image. But because of using that focal length, it meant that I couldn't get everything in all in one shot. So I had to take a series of shots panning from left to right and then stitch them together in Photoshop later. And this is the result that I got. If you're interested, I'm shooting on a Canon 5D Mark III camera with a 70-200mm f2.8 L lens. My settings are a shutter speed of about 3 seconds, f11, ISO 100. Amber says, what's for tea tonight? Well, I'm glad you asked me that, Amber. Because tonight we've got braised steak in a rich onion gravy in a very appetizing plastic bag. So apparently we boil it in the bag for 20 minutes and then it'll be ready. That's the water just coming up to boil now. So I'll drop the bag in like that. Hopefully that'll be okay. Remove bag from box, place unopened bag into a large pan of boiling water, bring back to the boil and simmer for 20 minutes, do not let the pan boil dry. Stand for one minute and then shake the bag gently before serving. Right. Excellent. So we've got the window and the vent open, so we've got plenty of ventilation. So hopefully we won't die. unless it's food poisoning. I think we'll have some bread and butter with it as well. Don't you, Amber? Pick up 
Who can resist the crust off the end of the bread? One of life's little treats. <clears throat> Butter up some bread. Let's go with it. Oh, look at that. Teeny piece of crust. Put the mashed potato in the pan. The pan that I had to rescue from Eileen's cooking last week. But we won't go into that, will we, Eileen? Drop a bit of veg into there to boil with that as well. You're wanting to know why I had to rescue the pan for Mylene's cooking last week. Well, before I tell you that, I better turn this down a bit, because if I don't, I'm gonna end up with another pan to rescue. There we go. So, last week we were having Uncle Ben's golden rice from a packet. Now, to be fair, Eileen wanted to cook it in the microwave, which is the way that we would normally do it at home. But I said, rather than getting the microwave out and going to all that hassle, you could just make it in a pan. So the instructions say, just a minute, I'll get the packet out and I'll tell you what the instructions say. It says to cook it in a pan. Squeeze the pouch to separate the rice. Uh, 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 uh. So you separate the rice. Boil about two tablespoons of water. Add the rice, cover and simmer for three minutes. Stir the rice through for a perfect finish. What it doesn't say is squeeze the pouch, boil the water, and add the rice in the packet into the pan. Let me tell you, it makes a mess when that packet melts and sticks to the pan along with the rice. It wasn't pretty, but I'm really not one to criticize when it comes to cooking. Cause I am no expert at all. So there we go. Steak in onion gravy, mashed potato and mixed veg. Lovely. This is our view this morning from the lounge. Looking out across Loch Lomond. Through the rectangular window. We've got a guy who's come and set up all his angling gear. He's well equipped. He's got a chair and an umbrella and his net all set up. He's been set up about half an hour now, but I've not seen him catch anything yet. Amber's in the doggy bag. She's been out for a morning walk and now she's just drying off. In addition to this bit where I've parked, there's also another parking area just across this bridge. Leaving now to head towards Rowadannon at the northern end of the road, passing a few more interesting spots along the way. To the other part of the car park, just there, we're sheltered by trees so you don't get quite as good a view, but I suppose if it's windy then you're a bit more sheltered from it. That's the entrance there to the campsite. Closed for the winter at the moment. A campsite there, closed for the winter as well. That's Cashel. Yeah. Big American RV just there. Very nice. 
nice. So this is Salahi just coming up. No caravans, camper vans, boats or trailers. That's not very friendly, is it? At Roadenen now. So lots of lovely places where you can park. My favourite spot on the left just as we arrive, but I'll just do a quick circuit through the car park to show you the space that's available. the loch, misty and rainy today, but it's still a lovely place to be. Fabulous parking space right next to the loch with a lovely view across into the mist and the rain. A little island just over there. This car park at Roadenon is the start point for the walk up to Ben Lomond. So if you've got a group you don't fancy the walk up the mountain they can at least have somewhere nice to sit and wait for the uh, explorers a day ticket three pound terms and conditions displayed in car park let's go and have a look and see if it says anything about staying overnight i did check and there was no mention of no overnight parking it does say that the parking tariffs supply 24 hours a day so it must be fine The Roadenon Hotel has beer garden with lock views and fresh food served daily. It could be a nice place for some refreshments. Just come up to Salaki Bay again, but no caravans, camper vans, boats or trailers. It's a shame because it's a really nice place. I've been there in the car in the summer. There's a camping ground there, tents only. But even just for a day out, it's really nice. But obviously not welcome if you've got any kind of camper van, motorhome or caravan. Just coming up to the campsite at Cashel. It's closed at the moment. As you can see, it's got some nice pitches. I'll have a look online and see if I can find out when that opens up. I'm passing by the car park where we stayed last night. I'm going to head back now to Balmahar because if you remember when we came through on the way north, I said that we'd come back tomorrow, which is now today, and possibly climb up Conic Hill. Well, I don't fancy the climb today, as the weather's pretty rubbish, quite wet and windy. But I'll pull into the car park. If you do come to Scotland, you need to be prepared for weather like this. It's not always wet and windy, but we do get quite a high proportion of days of this kind of weather, so you need to be Happy that you can enjoy yourself regardless. So no sleeping or camping in this car park, unfortunately. But it does have public toilets. The start point for the walk up Conic Hill is just over there in that corner of the car park. It's a lovely walk and the top of the hill gives a fantastic view across the lock. This is a photo from a couple of years ago that I took from just below the summit of the hill. So that's the end of our trip up the east side of Loch Lomond. I'll be going up the west side as well, so look out for that video coming soon. Thanks very much for watching. I know this video is a bit longer than previous videos. Let me know which you prefer. Remember to like and subscribe, and check out my other videos in the Scene Scotland in a Motorhome series. Thanks again for watching. Catch you again next time. The Wangi. The Wangi. The Wangi.